Okay guys, we're going to move on with comparing quadratic functions now. We've compared linear functions, exponential functions, and now quadratic functions. And our final step will be to compare them all to each other. So a quadratic function is a polynomial function with the highest degree of 2 for the variable. It's, a, it's graph makes a problem. So we talked about when we were comparing functions how to identify whether a function was linear, quadratic, exponential. Um, quadratic functions all have a degree of 2, degree is the highest exponent. So here the, our parent graph, that's the most basic quadratic. In our standard form we have x squared. In this form, our vertex form, where we can pull the vertex out easily, if we multiplied x minus h times x minus h, we'd end up with an x squared. And our final form, our intercept form, does not show the x squared, but when you have x times x right here, you're going to get x squared. And so any of these are forms that could show up um, that we would use as the equations as part of when we're comparing. Um, we're going to use a lot of the same comparison points. We have rate of change. If you have a table of values with a given interval, remember the interval is x values. You're going to look for those x values and find which y values match with them. Once you have both points, you plug them into the slope formula. If you have a graph with a given interval, Follow the x-axis to the given x-values, and then you move up or down, whichever way you have to go to get to the graph to find the y-values. The y-intercept we know is used a lot. Where the graph crosses or touches the y-axis, that's where your x-value is 0. So if you're looking in a table of values or you have an equation, 0 will be an important value for your x. And um, for a given x-value, if you have the equation, you're going to plug that x-value into the equation and solve for the y-value. If you have a table of values, you find that x value and look for its corresponding y. And if you have the graph, same as when we were doing our uh, rate of change, you'll follow the x-axis to the given x value, move up or down to find the graph, and then you'll determine your um, y value. So let's do a couple examples here before you do the practice. So we have our two graphs here. Which quadratic function has a greater y-intercept? Remember the y intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So I have two spots. One graph crosses there and one graph crosses there. So one graph, the g of x, crosses at 5 and the f of x crosses at negative 1. How do these compare to each other? Well 5 is a bigger number than negative 1 and I want to know the greater y-intercept so g of x has the greater y-intercept. All right, let's try this with some table of values over an interval. So remember, these are x values. This is not a point. These are x values. So you are going to use these x values to go find their y values. So let's do f of x first. If our x value is negative 2, our y value is 4. And if our x value is negative 1, our y value is 1. And now we can plug this into the slope formula. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1, so 1 minus 4, divided by x2 minus x1. So we have 1 minus 4 equals negative 3. Negative 1 minus negative 2, remember that becomes a big old pot positive. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So I have a slope of negative 3. But when we're comparing our slopes, we want to look at the absolute value. So this is just going to be 3 for f of x um, to see how it compares. Well, now let's try the same thing with g of x. Our two points are if x is negative 2, my y value is 8. And if x is negative 1, my y value is 2. Same formula, 2 minus 8 divided by negative 1 minus negative 2. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Negative 1 plus 2 is a positive 1. So I have a slope of negative 6, but when we're comparing them, we want to look at the absolute value. 3 is going to be less than 6, and I want to know who has the greater. So g of x has the greater rate of change between these two table of values. All right, flip this guy over. Now we have two equations for number three. 
which quadratic function has a smaller value when x is 5. So they're telling you the x value, and we want to know what the y value is there. So what you want to do is you want to plug in 5 wherever there's an x, because it says that's what x is. So this is negative x squared. So we say negative, and the x squared plus 6x minus 9. So instead of x, our problem said it's 5. So where the x was, I'm going to plug in the 5. Now put this straight into your calculator, just like you see this. All right. Now, let me remind you a couple things when you're putting in the calculator. When you're leaving with a negative sign, you have to use the one down here, negative, not the minus sign. Parenthesis 5 squared plus 6 times 5 minus 9. Put it in just like you see it. And I got my y value here is going to be negative 4. Let's do the same thing. This quadratic function is in vertex form. It doesn't matter. It still has the x. We're going to plug it in. Where the x is, we put a 5 minus 4 squared plus 7. You can put this in your calculator just like you see it. 5 minus 4 squared plus 7. And I got 8 for the y value. Negative 4 is less than 8. And I want to know who has the smaller. So f of x has the smaller value when x equals 5. Okay. Now we have a table and a graph. We want to know who has the greater value when x is 3. So the table is the easiest. When x is 3, my y value is 9. Okay. So that one was pretty easy. Now let's go to the x-axis and follow it to where we get where x is 3. And you go up or down until you hit the graph. In this case, we got to go up. We're going to hit the graph right there. The y value there is 1. And 1 is less than 9. I want to know who has greater. So g of x has the greater value when x is 3. All right, just a couple more examples. Which quadratic function has a smaller value for the y-intercept? So who has a smaller y-intercept? The graph is easy. He's right here. So the graph's y-intercept value is 5. So for f of x, the y-value is 5 for the y-intercept. For g of x, we want to know the y-intercept. Well, x's value at the y-intercept is 0. So if you plug in 0 for x, you're going to get your answer. So 0 squared is 0 times negative 1 fourth is 0. 5 is greater than 0. I want to know who has the smaller value. g of x has the smaller value. All right, one last one. This one takes a little bit more work. Which quadratic function has a greater rate of change over the interval negative 4 to 2? All right, so negative 4, remember, x values. So let's name our points here so we can find our slope formula. So we have negative 4. I have to go down to hit the graph, and it hits the graph right here at negative 3. Okay. So negative 4, 3. And when x is 2 is right here, it's going to hit the graph at positive 3. All right, so now let's set up our slope formula. Put my negative on there. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 3 minus negative 3 becomes 3 plus 3, which is 6. 2 plus 4 becomes 6. So my slope here is 1. Okay, and it's a positive number. I don't have to worry about the absolute value because the absolute value of a positive number is just that number again. Here's where a little bit more work comes in. I've given you the equation and I've given you the interval with two x values. What you need to do is you need to either plug each of these x values in to find their y values, or we can use our handy dandy calculator, which is what I'm gonna have us do to pull the values out. All right, so we're going to go into y equals, and we're going to put our equation in there, just like we see it here, 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. So I want to know 
when x is negative 4, what is the y value? And when x is 2, what is the y value? Um, press the second button and then the graph button and it gives us our table of values. So what this is, is the calculator is taking all of these x values and plugged them into the equation for you and giving you the y value. So if x is negative 4, that's right up here, you get a y value of 25. And if x is 2, you get a y value of 19. All right, so now that we have those two points, let's plug them into the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over divided by x2 minus x1. 19 minus 25 is negative 6. 2 minus negative 4 becomes plus 4, which is 6, which gives us a slope of negative 1. However, we got to take the absolute value, so we have a slope of 1. They have the same slope, so they are the same. That's how they compare to each other. All right, as always, please let me know if you have any questions that I can help you with, and we'll talk to you later.